So yeah, as you can see, we've cattle inside already and it's only the 30th of September. Like, what is going on? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are watching this video at, but welcome back to Finnegan's Farm. So in today's video, I'm just gonna do a bit of a day in the life. Anything can happen, but we'll see what happens during the day of my life. Some of you know that we don't do third cut silage, so we have our second cut done and the mowers are put away. Now, you'll question why I'm up here, but the reason I'm up here is I got oil and I've got diesel. And I've got a little can here, a little gun. So the POA is to add two parts oil, one part diesel into the gun. Now the diesel literally just lets it flow through the gun that bit easier because the oil won't flow out of it. And we're going to spray all the machines because adding the oil to the paintwork just adds that coating and stops oxygen getting in, which prevents rust. So over time, it'll save you money when you go to secondhand trade is the plan that's what to say anyway so um i'll get this going here now so i have a can here now this is a handy pour as i rubbed it from the workshop sorry marco pour in there now and probably a bit too much lovely this is going to be the tricky one. I never really thought through on the big lid versus the small lid. The price of it nowadays, you wouldn't want to spill it. Oh, 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 oh. Lovely. Now, yeah, put the lid back on that. Give it a good shake. And now, let's see what she does. So I possibly could have done this at home before I brought up the machines, but because of all the rain when we were washing them, never got a chance to dry. So there's no point putting oil on wet surface because it'll run off it. So I said I'd park everything in the shed, then just come up once, turn on the Jenny and the work trailer, and we have an air compressor here, and blow it all on, get it done once. Now when I am doing this, I try to avoid any of the plastic covers or hydraulic pipes because it doesn't do that well on rubber and plastic, the oil and the diesel kind of eats into it, so just avoid that if you can. So I used to think that putting on this stuff just made the machines look well because they'd be all shiny, but no, it does serve a purpose, so I'm one can done and I've all this side, so I have a few more cans now before. So that's all the machines done, looking very well, may I say. Um, Important that you don't put too much on that it drips in the ground. As you can see, there's a little bit there to stand, but that would have ran off. Um, then the mix between diesel and oil is obviously important because if you put too much diesel, it'll run quicker. And yeah, I was lucky enough, I had a big open shed. There's no doors in it at all, so it's good airflow. But if I was doing it again, I probably should have been wearing a mask. And I know Dad's going to give out to me for doing that, but um, I just didn't bring it with me, and that was my own fault. Uh, other than that then, yeah, hopefully now it'll just preserve the old paint and reduce a bit of rust and that's all we want so yeah until next year good luck lads so i just came to drop the diesel that i robbed for the machinery uh back we're up here in some of you might recognize the cabin shed these are the four cabin pens that will be put in place but the lads are just cleaning out the shed we kind of had a few cattle in it and a bit of machinery and stuff Hmm, what are these doing in here? Ladies, what's wrong? Why are you inside? Talk to me. What's wrong? Well, it's too cold and wet outside. So you just come in here where the food's put in front of you and you can relax. So I was here wondering why the cattle are in, but I said I'd asked the main man, Jack. Jack, what's going on? 
Um, well, we got a tail end of an old storm there, yeah. Storm Agnes, so... Wouldn't take a genius to figure out why they're no, inside. No, no, look, it's probably a common thing now this week around the country, cattle being housed, but um, we're just going to try and stretch them out another wee while yet. Like, we'd rain yesterday, a good day today, mm. more rain tomorrow. Yeah, it's hard. It's looking better next week there, say, probably Monday, if we could at all, we'd get them back out. But, look, the main reason just for housing them this early is where they were, tender bit of ground, yeah. open, not much shelter, like there's a few baby calves, but not baby calves. They're older now, but still they'd be vulnerable to the elements of the weather. So, mm -hmm. look, they're actually they're content enough now, they've found it hard to settle the past day or two, but actually better in than out in that yeah. weather. Like. Yeah, and they're even protecting the grass. Yeah. Protecting the grass yeah. by having them yeah. in here, that yeah. when they do go out, they're not yeah. walking across, walking or across or it. Like, because there is grass, the growth rates have been up over the past weeks, there is grass out there, it's just the ground conditions underneath. Yeah. So, look, please God, if you've got a bit of weather now, you'd stretch them out another wee while. Um, We'll probably, from the beginning of the next week, we'll start to house some of the younger stock anyway, regardless of what the weather is. So okay, yeah. Remember last year, I think it was the 1st of November we were bringing them in, mm. so 1st first of October now, it's, yeah, it's a bit month bit of earlier, year. but for the year that was in it now, it's not too bad at all. Yeah, but it's look, it's all extra cost, like they're eating silage there now, meal, it's all cost, cost, cost. Like you shouldn't be eating into your winter feeding not this yet, early in yeah. the year. I know there's lads worse off that might have to eat into it during the drought and that, but mm. uh, it makes things difficult. Like you would have seen there, we were at the slurry there today. Yeah. Like you you're, you could be good, yeah, you need, well, a, but like it's too wet, like ground conditions, you wouldn't travel. It, no. You wouldn't travel, like we could be at it there ourselves, but tankers but you'd be only making muck so yeah we'll wait for the pipes and please god get it out and yeah 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 send them sheds i need to get ready for yeah the rest of the stock rest of the stock so so the rest of the stock is still out though because there's yeah bits of areas where there's yeah no there's great we have two herds there actually around the home yard and there's great shelter there there's no loss in them mm. and the farm yard actually where we we're at the slurry there today now they'll probably be housed next week because it's a heavier bit of ground it's heavier ground yeah, yeah heavier ground so um Oh look, this, this time of year you don't really mind. No. It's a good way to get yourself back into it. Yeah, when I see when I walk back in, it's like, oh, here we go again. Here we again. go again, <laughs> right, round two or round three again. Yeah, the smell of the silage. And yeah, but it smells good though. That's, yeah, a nice bale, that's a nice bale of stuff there. Smell the meal now, that'll bring you back in. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah. better to smell the meal, but. So what, well, Friday today, they might get two bales tomorrow there and do them till Monday and yeah. see what Monday does and to go out then. Hopefully get them back yeah. out because they're happy when they're out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they, they can't complain in there. They're bedded. No, they're bedded. Like they're so. fed, and they're yeah. getting meal. The only thing is, if they, you do keep them in the wild, they get a bit tender in their feet. They're not getting as much exercise. But mm. look, it's all part and parcel. Yeah. Uh, cows are in some condition there. They could probably do it slimming down now from now until uh, January, February, until yeah. the start calving, yeah, put them yeah. on a drier mix with a bit of hay, maybe or something. Um, yeah, I just you don't want them too fat when no, they're calving because no. you never calve them. No. Um, you just kind of this time of year focus on your wanelands there, their progeny, and yeah. get them right because the cow will keep ticking over there this time of year. As long as she's, I see two lick buckets there, need plenty of magnesium this time mm. of year. And they, are, and they are licking them. Oh, they are. Like I only put them two out there. Yes, they're nearly gone. So no, they were a bolist, but that's not to say like it just helps having the mineral lick there as yeah. well. So ah, look. Very good, very good. Well, these are fed for the evening now, so, yeah, so. we can tip home. Happy with everything. We have the other right. shed now to just kind of wash out and then yeah. that's ready to go. That's for everything to wash. That's spotless there. Like, yeah. so ready to get dirty again and maybe a few improvements there around the uh, farm yards for Marco and that. My tip yeah, away to like Just if myself and yourself are tipping around, we see something, we might just Stay do a job and it'll make our lives handier, won't exactly. it? Exactly. Most definitely before they come in. Yeah. Very good. Right. So now we just transfer it out to the the green, green grass. Yeah, and there's plenty of it, Carl. Yeah, plenty, plenty of it, is right. He's removed in here this morning. Uh, I used to split this field in two, but just the fact that ground is yeah. so tender now, you'd be just afraid if you did leave them in a section there that all they do, might do is walk, so you're Trump, probably yeah. better off spreading out the footprint. Um, Some fine calves here. It's great calves. So these would have been the batch that actually were running with the cattle in the shed, and the boys were split from the girls and these are the bull calves here now 
which would have been grazing the multi-species sward actually at the yard all summer. Yeah. Now look, we didn't. We had a busy summer. We didn't get time to weigh them or compare them or anything. But yeah, just yeah, judging yeah. by eye, myself, by yourself, eye, yeah. miles ahead of the rest. Definitely, well, there's, I'd say there's 50 or 100 kilos in the difference. Now, we'd want to study it a bit more and look into it and see when they were born, but we have a tight cabin window like this. Yeah, just it's not going to be much of a gap. gap yeah. So, yeah. Um, look, it has to be a bit watery, but still, their back ends are dry. There's not too many. They were dosed, they were vaccinated, they got the first jab of uh, Bovi pass there for pneumonia, and they get the second jab then when they come in. So, no, I'd be fierce, fierce happy there with this yeah. cattle. Yeah. And you were saying there's no heifer. Yeah, does it? So every all the progeny here, all the bull cows here, to be all out of cows. Now that could be like you, you have a heifer a, yeah. there. If she's a first calf. Like she's not going to be the calf that one cow would produce. Yeah. So um, a couple of other herds there where there is heifers running first and second calves, you would notice there the calf just wouldn't be as good. But they'll get there. Yeah. They'll get there. So you know them cattle are happy. Like they're settled heads down. Even there, you, they wouldn't be used too used to two people in the field. There, they're not even they're not bothered. No, set them very. No, they are. Like even any time you go into something, they're very quiet. Like. That's one thing about our cows here. They're not. They don't pass much. They don't pass much. They're not flighty. No. Flighty Which helps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Very good. So as the day comes to a close, it's currently. I don't know what time it is. It's nearly nine o'clock, and we're digging spuds because we're just gonna have to dig them when the weather is right. So. We're digging them now, we're only going to go till about 10 because tomorrow's another day and uh, <laughs> and uh, so I have my tail lift, Amo has his green Mitsubishi and uh, we're, we just unload the trailers. Some days you think you're farming, some days you think you're in Formula 1, it's hard to know with us, we're just zoom zoom boom boom. But the trailer's on its way back there now and we're going to unload it as quick as we can. That's how we do it. You know what? Go on, Robbie. Go on. Away with you. Don't be like me. <laughs> and uh, Eamon had the near side. That's why he was quicker. Because I had to obviously travel around the trailer. But as a nice older brother, I gave him that. I let him do that. So, yeah, that was a total of five minutes. <laughs> You're eating a chipper. Oh, my God. You fat way, sir. Hey, fat boy. Fat boy. <laughs> Right, and that's all from Finley's Farm this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're on 15,000, so keep pushing her up. And next week's video will be on Friday because there's something very special next Friday. So guess below in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Good luck.